Praise the Lord. Good to be in the Lord's house. Good to see Gary and Rhonda and Burley, Jason, Elena, all of you this morning. Good to have all of you. Feel your liberty in the Lord. We're here to worship Him. Amen. Amen. Jimmy was preaching about Palm Sunday last night. Today is Palm Sunday. How many come with the praise on their heart? Amen. Amen. We don't have palm branches, but we got two good instruments to praise the Lord with, and that's our hands. Amen. Our hands and our arms. Let's lift His name up today. Amen. Let's stand and invite the presence of the Lord in our midst. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your house this morning. God, thank you for each and every one that's been able to be here with us today. We pray that you bless them, Lord, and those that would like to be here this morning. They're not able to. We pray that you bless them, Lord. Bless those be watching by the means of internet and DVD, Lord, moving their needs. Have your way in this service today, God. Bless the teachers, Lord, the singing. Lord, bless the breaking of the bread of life. Let it be food to the soul. Lord, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it's in your name, Jesus. We ask these things, that everything be done for your glory. And we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Page 305. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love.
Praise the Lord, everybody. We've got a prayer request we we'll turn in next morning. Pray for all Remember my sisters and their families, the ladies I work with, my mom and dad and their families, grandmother and grandfather. We have a special request. Remember Jonathan, he's working this morning. Remember his mom. Remember all of our kiddos. We're trying to have our Easter play, and it seems like the devil's fighting us hard on it. Kids are getting sick left and right, so just remember them. They're all excited about it. Thank you. 
Are you happy this morning? Got your Bible. Turn over to Matthew 26. Do ask for your prayers this morning. The Lord's will be done. Say we do appreciate your prayers. Over the past couple of weeks, amen, we... All facing a battle, some form or fashion, but the Lord will see us through. Amen. Amen. I've cl- I've uh, cleaved to a scripture. Uh, David, very familiar saying, but it's more than a saying; it's a testimony. He said, "I was once young, and now that I'm old, 
He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed of begging for bread. And uh, I know God's got all things in control. Amen. And we do appreciate the Lord for all that he's done and what he's going to do. Amen. Jim mentioned it last night and we mentioned it a while ago as we opened this being Palm Sunday. This being the, the Holy Week. Uh, thank you, sir. This is, uh, this is the precious week to us as Christians, but uh, like we say oft times, Easter is more than just once a year, and uh, every day can be a holy day, but we thank God for His Son Jesus uh, that was willing to come, and uh, had it not been for the man named Jesus, where would we be? Where would we be? Matthew 26, jump down to verse 17, this is all all some good reading. There ain't nothing in the, in the Word of God that's bad. But uh, for the sake of time, uh, Matthew twenty six seventeen, the Bible said, Now the first, day, the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man. And say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at thine house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. Listen what he had to say here in verse 21. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth, as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Lord, Lord. Verse 25, Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. I want you to take note of that scripture, verse 24, the latter part of it. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Amen. Judas, he was very deceived. And you know, I thought on these scriptures through the night and uh, you know, I was restless, and we all have those restless nights. And uh, I, I just begin to ponder upon the Lord. And, you know, there's many ways that uh, this could be brought out, uh, the kiss of death. Uh, you know, just different thoughts that, that could be given here. But uh, the, the thought that stuck in my mind, what have we betrayed Him for? What have we betrayed Him for? Many, many have, amen... Uh, hearing testimonies, maybe even last night, maybe it was Sister Diane testified that uh, talking about many that once served the Lord and how that they've grown cold on God. They no longer have a desire to be in the, in the house of the Lord. They no longer have a desire to want to worship God. They no longer have a desire, amen, uh, for the Lord until the time of trouble, until the time of need. Let some calamity, let something grievous come upon them Lord, they'll, they'll ring your phone off the hook and uh, uh, beat the door off your hinges. 
amen, wanting you to get a prayer through for them. But friend, I, I want you to know this morning, amen, this is the personal relationship that I have with the Lord. I can't get to heaven with your relationship with God. And you can't get to heaven with my relationship with God. This is a personal experience that we have to have. Amen. Judas, he was blinded by the money. He was blinded. Amen. They, they sought accusation. You can read all through the scriptures, through the gospels here. This is Matthew's interpretation of what had happened that night. But they sought to find accusation with the Lord. They, they sought to, amen, to bring in a, a counsel on the Lord to try to get him put away, to try to, amen, to stop his mouth. But I want to say this today. Amen. This gospel will not be stopped. I do not care who it is or what they try to do. This gospel will not be stopped. This gospel, everything, every prophecy, amen. The Bible said that, that uh, uh, the, the, every prophecy of this book will come to pass. There will not be one I left undotted. There will not be one T left uncrossed. Everything's going to happen just as it says in the Word of God. But there's one thing about it today. There's a way of escape. Jesus told them here. He said, take and eat. This is my body. And he said, drink ye all of it of the cup. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Friend, we have to take of his body. Amen. We have to take of his body amen. the word of God. How many knows the Bible teaches us that the, the, the Lord, he was, amen, he, he was the word, but he became flesh and he dwelled among men. Amen. amen, this is the word. We've got to take and we've got to eat the whole book. Amen, amen. this is his body which was broken for us. This is the, the blood that was shed on Calvary. I, I, I sat there last night where Jim's are sitting right now as he was preaching. And I began to, I began to look at this cross. This is a smaller scale. But what people don't, amen, really realize about the cross, that there was a wedge that went in the cross somewhere right here. A triangular wedge. Amen. Do you understand that the cross at this time was the, amen, was the form of capital punishment? The worst death, amen, that criminals could die of was crucifixion. You don't, you don't see the, uh, on the cross, you don't see the wedge, hey man, that was there to thrust into the pubic bone. You don't see the agony and the pain. Not only was their nails driven through their hands and through their feet, not only was their body beaten beyond recognition. Forty stripes save one. You see, it was unlawful to go the full 40. That was, hey amen, that was torture. But they went right to the very edge. The Lord. Huh? Yes. Friend, I want to tell you, there's those today that's, they man, they're, 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 they're treading on thin ice. Mom used to tell me that growing up. Son, you're treading on thin ice. Yes. Huh? You're treading on thin ice. Amen. And if the ice broke through, I knew what was getting ready to happen. This old boy was getting a whooping. Yes. Huh? But you see, I wanted to take it to the very edge to see how much that I, amen, little old mischievous me, I wanted to see how much that I could get by with. Well, I want to say this today. There's those that's, amen, pushing uh, the, their, their life to the very, amen, to the very edge. But if the blood ain't been applied to your life, friend, and I tell you, we have to stay under the blood. This ain't, this ain't a one and done. Come on, somebody. This ain't just so, this ain't just hey, coming to the Lord and praying and then sitting back and just riding out the storm. It, that, no, this is something we have to stay under the flow, uh, the, amen, of the blood of Calvary. How, how do we do that, preacher? Amen, we stay under the, amen, we stay under the flow by reading his word, by studying his word. We stay under the flow by having a prayer life where, where we commune with God. Now I want you to think about this this morning. You husbands and you wives, you think about this. Jesus. If you didn't have communication between you, you probably wouldn't stay married very long, would you? Bless the Lord. Huh? All right. Somebody nod or something. Bless the Lord. Huh? You wouldn't stay married very long, would you? Bless you have to have open communication. Yeah. Friend, you got to have communication with our God. Yeah. 
through and by His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. He told them, the, amen, the, the Holy Week is past. The, the crucifixion, crucifixion has taken place. Some say on, on Saturday he rested in the grave. I don't believe that. I believe he was in the heart of the earth. I believe he was preaching repentance. I believe he was leading, amen, those that wanted, that, that did not have the chance, that were destroyed in the flood, that did not have the chance of the plan of salvation. I believe he was preaching, amen, redemption to them. And on that great and get up morning, on that resurrection morn, amen, when they came into the tomb, the stone was rolled away. Amen. And the angel says, Why well, seek you the living among the dead? Now here he is, ascended back to the right hand of the Father. But the blood has to continually be applied to our life. This ain't a one and done. This ain't a once a week. This ain't a once a month. This ain't a once a year. Amen. This is a daily walk with God. Amen. And we must commune with God. We must have, a, amen, an open line of communication. Amen. Listen, we talk, do we not? We communicate one with another. Come on. We're living in modern times. We text. Uh, amen. A lot of people want to text. They don't want to hear people's voices on the phone. So they just want to text. And, amen. Back and forth. But it's still an open line of communication. You see. Amen. To have a relationship with God. You've got to have an open line of communication. And you've got to be able to talk to the Father. Amen. And Jesus said it this way. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Friend, I'm telling you. We have to go through His Son, Jesus Christ. We we have to go through the blood that was shed for the remission of sin. Amen. If we plan on making heaven our home, we must be born again. Amen. Amen. Jesus said it would have been better had this man not been born. Mark gave an account. Luke gave an account. John even gave an account. Amen. Jesus told him, said, the one that dippeth in his hand... It's the same time that I dip. This is he that will betray me. Amen. They begin to question amongst themselves. They begin to talk amongst themselves. Lord, is it I? Is it me? Oh, I, I don't want to be that one. No doubt you could hear their conversation. I don't want to be the one. Search me, O Lord. Say, Amen. Search, search me, God. Amen. amen. But you see, amen, it was, uh, the scripture is going to be fulfilled. The scripture had to be fulfilled. Come on, somebody. I believe it was Mark. Uh, don't hold me to it. it was, it's in one of the Gospels. Amen. But the, Jesus told him, he said, when you enter in into the city, he said, there'll be a man carrying a pitcher of water. He said, follow him. Huh? You see, that was very strange. That wasn't the customs. Amen. The women was the one who carried the water. Amen. But all of a sudden, they're going into the city, and here's a man carrying a pot of water. Amen. Jesus told him, said, you follow him. Amen. And you, you inquire him and you tell him that the master is ready to have supper here. Huh? You see, friend, the scripture is going to be fulfilled. Amen. Thank God. We was talking about the cross, the, 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 the cruel punishment. You think about it. You think about it. You're hanging there on that cross. Amen. You got nails driven through your hands and through your feet. Anybody ever stepped on a nail? Huh? Come on, somebody. No rusty nail. If your tetanus shot ain't up to date, man, you got some problems. Amen. You got some problems. You got some issues. I ain't never heard nobody step on a nail and say, boy, that felt good. I'm going to do it again. Huh? I ain't never heard nobody say, that felt good. I want to do it again. Amen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting carnal this morning, but Lord have mercy. Amen. These people are getting everything pierced today. I, I don't know about you, but I don't want that kind of torture. Amen. That ain't for me. I, I don't like needles. And I've had a, quite a few stuck in me in the last few weeks. You know what, friend? Jesus, he hung there on that cross. Hey, man, you know what held him to that cross? It wasn't those nails. It was the love of humanity. Hey, hey man, it was the love that he had to be. Hey, man, the Bible said he became obedient even unto the death of the cross. He became obedient to do the will of the Father. You see, that's what's wrong. Hey, man, with the, hey, man, with the church world today. Hey, man, they don't want to take and eat the whole book. They just want to eat the good parts. Hey, man, that don't get on their sin. They just want to eat the parts that, that don't expose the, hey, man, the, 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 the sin that they're committing. But can I tell you something? There's an all seeing eye. And he knows everything. And when you give your heart to the Lord, honey, there was, an, there was an angel dispatched to you and he's keeping a record. Amen. And he's writing down everything 
that you say and everything that you do. He's keeping a record. And I'm telling you what, when you stand before the Lord on that judgment day, amen, you won't be able to weasel your way out of it. I'm telling you what's the truth. Amen, there is murderers. Amen, that has been brought up. Amen, into the judicial system. Amen, and they get off on clerical errors. Amen, on, uh, uh, upon uh, uh, evidence that was, amen, tainted with or whatever. They get off on these things. But I'm telling you, when you stand before Him that day, amen, I'm telling you what's the truth. When that angel presents that record, amen, that's been kept of you, amen, you'll have to give it an answer to everything that you've ever said or that you've done. But there's one thing about it. When I stand there that day, amen, I hope and pray to God. I'm trying my best to live to the best of my ability, amen, to the best that I know how. I hope, amen, my defense steps in and says, Father, hang on just a minute. This one's with me. Amen. The, my blood has been applied to his life. Amen. And he's in good standing. Amen. And I'm longing to hear those words. Enter in. Amen. My good and faithful servant, you've been faithful over a few things. I'm longing for those words. Amen. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Even so, here's Judas. Amen. Listen, the Lord told him what was getting ready to happen, but he didn't understand. You know why? Amen. All he was thinking about was 30 little pieces of silver. All he was thinking about, hey man, was that money. What, what, boy, what am I going to buy with this? Huh? What am I going to buy with that? Come on, somebody. Hey man, that's all that he was thinking about. Hey man, that's all worldly things. Come on, neighbor. Come on. Hey man. I don't know about you. Well, amen. We, we can fast forward here. I know, amen, I, I'm trying my best to hurry this morning, but we can, we can jump through the Scripture and we can go over to verse 27, or chapter 27 and we can begin to read how the, the amen, G, Judas went back and he said, I, I've messed up. I'm sorry. I've repented. I don't want this money. Uh -uh. And they said, we don't want that money back neither. That's blood money. Right. Amen. That's blood money. We don't want it back. Amen. He repented and asked man to forgive him, but he didn't repent and ask God to forgive him. Come on, somebody. Turn over to chapter 27. Amen. Chapter 27, verse 3. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elders, saying, I have sinned. And that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Amen. And listen here. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful to put them Amen. Into the treasury. Because it is the price of blood. And they, and they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Amen. Wherefore the field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy. Amen. Jeremiah the prophet saying. And they took the thirty pieces of silver. The price of him that was valued. Whom they of the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Huh? Judas, he realized I've messed up. He's come back. Hey Amen. He's come back to the council. I don't want this. I don't want this money. Hey Amen. I don't want this. I've messed up. I've messed up. I've made a mistake. This, this man was innocent. They said, what's that to us? Huh? They got what they wanted. Friend, I want to say this this morning. Hey Amen. The world will love you until they get what they want from you. And then they'll cast you to the side. Huh? The world will take you in and they'll be your best friend. And the old saying, they'll wine and dine you till they get what they need of you. And then you're no more than something on the bottom of their shoe. Huh? You're no more. You're just like a, you're just like a soiled washcloth. Ain't nobody uses a dirty washcloth to take a shower with, is they? Huh? You ain't going to go to the dirty clothes hamper and get out a wash, wash cloth that's done been sold to wash your face in, are you? You see, that's the way the world is. They'll love you 
till they get what they want from you. They, they, didn't, they didn't care about Judas. What they wanted was somebody to betray the Lord. And when they got what they wanted, 30 pieces of silver, well, that wasn't nothing in the treasury. Hey, man, of the temple, that wasn't nothing. That wasn't nothing. Judas comes back. He said, I've messed up. Huh? I've messed up. I don't want this money anymore. This man's innocent blood. And he, they said, what's this to us? In other words, we don't care. We got what we wanted. We got what we wanted. Nobody, nobody come to Judas. I read it to you right here in the scripture. Nobody come to Judas and said, well, now listen. You've asked forgiveness of man, but you need to ask for forgiveness of God. You need to call on the one that, hey man, that can forgive you. Can I tell you, my friend, as you read on here in the Scripture, hey man, that, the, uh, that Peter himself even denied the Lord and betrayed Him? He was no better off than Judas. He was no better off than Judas. Huh? He wasn't no better off than Judas. He did the same thing that Judas did. Judas betrayed the Lord. Peter denied the Lord. He betrayed Him. Hey Amen. But you know what Jesus told him? He said, Peter... Amen. Peter said this. He said, Lord, though all men forsake you. He said, I'll never forsake you. I, I, I won't deny you, Lord. Right. Amen. And Jesus looked at Peter. Peter, before, the, before that cock crows, thou deny me thrice, three times. Huh? No doubt. I'm telling you what, no doubt. Jesus told them as they departed from the supper and they went out into the garden of Gethsemane. Amen. I've said this before and want to say it again. That word Gethsemane. Amen. That word there means the press. The great press. Gethsemane is where they brought the olives. And they pressed forth the olives and got the oil, the olive oil out of them. Gethsemane, great press, is where they, where they brought the grapes and they pressed them down to get, the, to get the juice from the grapes to make the wine. The great press. Jesus was in a great press there in that garden. He prayed. Amen. The Bible said He prayed until His sweat Became as great drops of blood. He was in great agony. He was, he was under, amen, enormous pressure. Amen. And he prayed, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Lord, this flesh don't want to go through what it's getting ready to go through. Would you please let this cup pass from me? But you know what? He went on to pray. Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Huh? Friend, I ask you this question this morning. Are you letting the will of God be done in your life? Huh? Are you praying, Father, not my will, but your will be done? Are you, amen, Paul said, I keep my body. Amen, and I bring it under subjection. He said, I make it do the things that it don't want to do. Are you making your body read the word of God? Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, we're living in a fast-paced world. Everything's just at warp speed. Amen. We got drive throughs We got, amen, listen, they, there's drive through wedding chapels now. Huh? You can drive up to a wedding chapel, roll your window down, and say, I want to get married. Amen. If you've got your marriage license, and it's been, amen, uh, uh, okay that you can get married, that you're, amen, not double married, and so forth and so on. Amen. They can, they can marry you, and you don't even have to get out of your car. We're living in a fast-paced world. But friend, I'm telling you, we've got to make time for the Lord. We make time for everything else. We'll set our alarm to be sure that we get up. Amen. Even if it's the last minute. My wife sets about four or five different alarms. And she knows the first one. that She's got so many minutes. And she knows the second one. that Now she's down to this many minutes. And the third one's down to this many. And then so forth and so on. And I'm telling you what. It has been proven. If you'll just get up the first time. You won't feel as tired the rest of the day. Because your body realizes, your brain, amen, the greatest computer that there ever was, the human brain that God, amen, invented. Amen. When you wake up from that slumber, your brain goes into motion that it's time to get up and go on. But when you go back to slumber, that brain's are thinking, hey, I need another five to eight hours of rest. And then you feel tired the rest of the day. Huh? That didn't cost you nothing this morning. That was free. Here we are. That, that here we are, we standing before the Lord. Amen. We set those alarms. 
We get up early and we do those things, amen, to please the flesh. We don't want to be late for work. We've got to have time. We've got to, we've got to make our, 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 our energy drinks. We've got to make our, our morning uh, daiquiris and different things. We, we've got to have this fruit and that fruit. And we've got to juice it down. We've got to blend it together. And we make sure we've got time for everything to do under the flesh. But what about the Lord? Huh? What would be wrong with setting that alarm just a little bit earlier so you could get up and you could, amen, you could, could begin to commune with the Lord. And if you do that already, God bless you. Amen. But I'm trying to tell you this morning, we make time for everything else and we put Jesus last. Friend, it don't work that way. He said either I'm first or I'm nothing. Because you see, when you truly get a relationship with God, when you truly, amen, get on fire for the Lord, you can't let the word down. Amen, you can't lay it down. You're, you're wanting to read it. Well, you done read, you done read once today. I want to read it again. Amen, you know why this word's alive. It'll reach out and it'll grab a hold on you. Amen, and you'll begin to read that word. And you'll, amen, the Lord, listen, the Spirit and the Word agree. And I want to say this this morning. When you read the Word of God, if you've got an angry spirit or, or your spirit don't agree with what you're reading, you ain't got the Spirit of God. Because His Spirit and this Word agree. Huh? Peter denied the Lord. Judas denied the Lord. Huh? Peter repenting. Judas hung himself. Huh? Peter didn't repent to man. He repented to God. Huh? He went out, the Bible said, and he wept bitterly. Lord, forgive me. I've sinned. Huh? No doubt. The Bible don't say this. No doubt. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt. That third time. That Peter denied the Lord. That he looked over and looked at the Lord. And the Lord was looking back at him like I told you so. Huh? Jimmy was preaching last night. There Jesus would. He took him up to the temple. Amen. And he told him. He said they, they're going to destroy this temple. He said but in three days. He said I'm going to rebuild it. Huh? They said Lord they didn't understand. They was carnal. Amen. That's what's wrong with the church world today. They're too carnal. Huh? They're too carnal. Well Lord. It took our fathers 40 and 6 years, 46 years to build this temple. And you say you're going to build it again in three days? Honey, he wasn't talking about the, hey man, the stones and the mortar and the bricks. Hey man, he wasn't talking about the big beautiful columns and the steps. Hey man, he was talking about the covenant. He said this, this, this temple, this, listen, can I tell you the day your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Come on somebody. Hey Amen. Hey man, I, I, don't, I don't have nobody to blame but myself when it comes to my body. Huh? But Jesus said they're going to they're gonna destroy this body. Friend, I'm telling you what. Lord, you think about what our Savior went through. You think about the, the pain and the agony. I've said it already this morning. He's hanging on that cross. Nails in His hands. Hey Amen. They, they got His feet crossed over and a big nail drove through both His feet. Huh? And here he is. Now you think about this. He's a pushing up. Amen. With his legs. Amen. And the only leverage he's got is that's that big old nail that's through his feet. And he's pushing up as much as he can. And he's trying to, amen, trying to bring his arms in a downward motion to lift his body up because of that wedge. Amen. That's in that, amen, driven, amen, that's driving pain into that pubic bone. Huh? And then after they hung there through agony, hey man, they would come by and they'd break the legs of those criminals hanging on that cross. And when they would break the legs, hey man, they didn't have the strength in their arms to pull themselves up no more. Hey man, until their dying breath, they was in agonizing pain from that wedge. Huh? But it was spoken by the prophet that not a bone of his body would be broken. I've heard people preach and say this right here. Amen, no doubt. When they whipped him with the cat of nine tails, it cracked and it broke ribs. No, sir, it did not. It did not. The Bible said not a bone of his body would be broken. And I'm telling you this, amen, as sure as I am a man this morning, that there wasn't a bone in his body broken. Amen. I heard a preacher say they beat him in the head so much that they give him a concussion. Friend, I don't believe that. Amen. To have a concussion, the skull has to be broken. Amen. There wasn't a bone of his body broken. Amen. It was spoken. And friend, I want to tell you, amen, when the Lord speaks something into existence, amen, there ain't no man going to be able to change it. Amen. But he cried out from the cross, it is finished. 
the completed work of Calvary. Amen. The Bible said he hung his head, gave up the ghost. I heard another preacher preaching one time when they pierced him with that sword. That they wasn't a bone of his body broken until after he died. Because when they pierced him, amen, in the side with that spear, that no doubt it severed a, one of his rib bones. I don't believe that garbage. Uh-uh. I believe they thrusted that spear up into his side and went up under the rib cage. And the Bible said out came the blood and the water. Huh? Thank God. Friend, I ask you this question this morning. This being Palm Sunday. This was the day the Lord, amen, Jimmy was preaching some wonderful last night. Amen. This was the day that, amen, Jesus told him. He said, I want you to go. Hey man, there's going to be a coat tie and I want you to go and I want you to loose it. Hey man, and when the master of the coat, he says, what are you doing? Why, why, were you taking my coat? You tell him the master has need of it. Right. Hey man, and he was okay with that. Yeah, bless you, Lord. And they brought that coat to Jesus. Hey man, and they began to lay garments upon that, upon that donkey. Yeah, and they set Jesus upon it. And they began to holler Hosanna in the highest. And they began to praise him. And they began to magnify him. Those that had cloaks and coats and garments on. Amen. They took them off, Jim, and they laid them in the street. Amen. The sign of royalty, the king. Amen. Is it coming into the city? And those that didn't have a garment, amen, that they could take off and lay in the highway. Amen. To lay into the street. Amen. They, would, they climbed up there and they broke the branches out of the palm trees. Amen. And they began to line the street of that city. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Blessed is the king. Amen. This is our king. This is our Lord. This is our Savior. This is he. Amen. That has come. Amen. For the lost sheep of Israel. Amen. But you see all alone. Amen. In their heart, they were, amen, they were just bound by emotion. Amen. Because I'm telling you, amen, on that Palm Sunday, that triumphal entry into the city, they was hollering, Hosanna, amen, to the highest. Amen. Blessed is the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. But just a few short days later, amen, about five, six days later, five days later, amen, they're hollering, crucify, 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 the same one. Amen. And that was hollering Hosanna in the highest. Right. It's hollering crucify this man Jesus. Huh? Right. Whose blood shall his hand, whose hand shall his blood be upon? Bless him, Lord. They said, let it be upon us. Yeah. Huh? Right. Friend, they wasn't, they wasn't very intelligent. They wasn't very smart. Hey man, let that blood be upon us. Let his death be up to us. Come on. Pilate went in and he tried to wash his hands of this. Yeah, yeah. Amen. His wife told him, he said, I'm telling you, I've had a dream about this, honey. Amen. You don't need to do nothing with this man. Right. Amen. You don't need to do nothing. You know what they wanted? Amen. They wanted a murderer. Come on, somebody. Amen. Huh? Yeah. They wanted a murderer. Amen. They wanted this man, this, this criminal that had done wrong, no doubt probably robbed him. Maybe killed one of their loved ones. Amen. It was, hey man, it was custom to this time of year that one of the prisoners be released. And Pilate thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll set this up. They'll surely want to release Jesus. Yeah. No. They wanted that hardened criminal released. Amen. Huh? Right. They wanted that hardened criminal released. Give us Barabbas. Barabbas! We want the world. We want the things of this world. Hey man. Hey man, I told you here not too long ago. Hey man, they're marching, hey man, up and down the streets. And I'm not trying to offend nobody this morning. Hey man, but it breaks my heart. Hey man, and their chant is, we're here, we're queer, and we're not ashamed of it. We're here, we're queer, and we're not ashamed of it. Hey man, friend, I'm telling you what, they don't realize what they're marching to. Hey man, they've been blinded, and I'm telling you what, unless they repent in the blood of Jesus Christ, hey man, can be applied to their life, they're going to stand before the Lord one day. Hey man, and they might try to, hey man, raise that chant again. We're here, we're queer, and, and we're not ashamed of it. And the Lord's going to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you, honey. And I'm telling you, uh, amen, those demons, they'll come and they'll bind them with chains and with fetters. Uh, amen. And they'll cast them into that outer darkness. Uh, and you know what's going to happen. Uh, amen. The devil's going to laugh at them for a season. But there's going to come a time when the devil, uh, amen, and all those fallen angels uh, and all those intruders, all of humanity, amen, that has chose to go to the devil's hell. Friend, I'm telling you, amen, people's not made to go to hell. They choose to go to hell. 
They're going to be cast into a lake of fire. Amen. The Bible said, where there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. You think about this. You think about this. You're in so much pain. You're biting on yourself or you're biting on your neighbor. Amen. You're screaming in torment. Oh, God, have mercy on me. Amen. The Bible said he's going to laugh at your calamity. Uh, he's going to laugh. Come on. You're going to look across that great gulf. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to look over into the portals of heaven. Amen. You're going to see loved ones. Maybe it's a son or a daughter. Amen. Amen. Just walking up and down the street of glory over there. Amen. You're going to see the lion laid down with the lamb. You're going to, you're going to see the great I am. Glory to God. You're going to see that, amen, that crystal clear river. You're going to see, amen, maybe a mom or a dad or a husband or a wife. Amen. You're going to look across that great gulf. Oh, God, have mercy, but it's going to be too late. Amen. And you're going to see everything, all the beauties of heaven. But you know what? Amen. If you don't make it to heaven, I won't know it. If I don't make it to heaven, you won't know it. Amen. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Amen. If the Lord should come today, say, Preacher, I don't want you to scare me. Amen, friend. I'm not trying to scare you this morning. It's time we get serious about our relationship with God. We got time for everything else. We got time for ball games. We got time for theme parks. We got time for fishing and hunting and doing every other thing that we want to do. But we ain't got time to serve the Lord. I've heard people say, they don't have to come to church. Amen. I said, I don't know where you get that from. Huh? They say, I had one man tell me. He said, I know what scripture you're thinking of. To forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. He said, my, me and my family, we assemble together in my living room. I said, that's good. I said, but I'm a child of God and I want to go to church. I'm not looking for excuses not to go to church. Huh? Hey Amen. I ain't getting up. Hey man, looking for an excuse not to get ready and go to the house of God. Hey man, I'm put, I, you can ask my wife. It gets on her nerves sometimes. She said, I got to do this and that. I said, it's church night. We, I know it's church night. I said, I just want you to be reminded. We're going to the house of the Lord. It ain't that she's going to do something bad or nothing like that. Don't let your mind wander. Hey man, but I'm looking for reasons to come to the house of God. I don't like missing church. Amen. How good and how pleasant. Amen. It is for God's people to dwell together in unity. Can I tell you where the unity is? The Bible said that is where He commands the blessings. I'm looking for some healings. I'm looking for some miracles. Oh, me too. I want to see the blind see. I want to see the lame. Wait, friend, I'm telling you, you can die sick. You can die lame and make it to heaven. The miracle I'm talking about, uh, amen, is to be born again by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The greatest miracle that anyone could ever see. Amen. See a sinner give their life to the Lord. I'm telling you what. I've said this and I've said this. If the song Amazing Grace don't move you, amen, friend, I'd check myself. Bless the Lord. Huh? I was reading there in the book of Judges the other night. Amen, old Samson. Huh? Old Samson. Amen. He went in. Amen. He saw Delilah and she was fair to look upon. Amen, somebody. Amen. He began to, amen, he began, amen, to, amen, this woman, he began to have a relationship with her. Amen. They come to Delilah and they said, listen, amen, Samson was a Nazarite. Amen. He was, amen, he was favored of the Lord from his birth. It was told to his mother, amen, not to, not to put a razor to his head. Amen. He's going to be mine from the birth. Amen. And she told her husband. She said, the Lord come by. The, amen. Well, she didn't know what it was at the time. Amen. She said, uh, amen, an angel come by. Amen. It told me this thing. Amen. And they begin to pray. And his daddy, Samson's daddy, amen, said, Lord, would you send that angel one more time that I could hear it myself? Yeah. Huh? Here he is. Amen. They inquired of Delilah. Amen. Them old Philistines. They said, find out where he gets his strength from. Come on. Amen. Oh, Delilah was a sweet talk to him, honey. I'm telling you, the world will use you till they get what they want from you. Then they'll throw you to the side. They don't care about you. He said, if they, if they use new ropes upon me, he said, uh, amen, uh, a rope that's never been stretched or never been used. He said, that, amen, that is where, amen, my strength lies. 
Hey man, and Delilah awoke him. She, he fell asleep. Hey man, and said, Samson, Samson, the Philistines, here they come. Hey man, Jim. Hey man, they had him bound, and he got up and he rent those ropes. Hey man, the 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 the, the green flax. I can't remember exactly what it is right now. Hey man, but he told them, said if they bind me with those green, hey man, those green flax. He said, hey man, he said my strength. Hey man, it'll surely leave me. And Delilah told the Philistines, said this is what it is. Hey man, where he gets his strength from and they come and they bound him amen and he said amen she said unto him Samson Samson the Philistines are coming amen Jim and he rose he rose up and he was able to break the amen the fetters amen those things that had him bound amen Delilah said why have you lied to me huh why have you deceived me for you you said your strength was in this and your strength was in that. Amen. I adjure thee, tell me speedily where your strength lies. He said, it's in the locks of my hair. Huh? For I'm a Nazarene. I'm a Nazarite. Amen. And it was told that when I was born that there should not be a razor. Amen. Placed upon my head. Amen. No doubt as she was rubbing her fingers through his hair, he drifted off asleep. Amen. And she acquired of the Philistines to bring her some scissors. Amen. That she may cut his hair. Amen. And she cried out, Samson, the Philistines, here they come. Amen. And he rose up to rent himself. And the locks of his hair was cut off. Yeah. Amen. And he had no strength left within him. Amen. And they bound him. They gouged his eyes out. Amen. This was a mighty man of valor. Amen. He would take the jawbone of an ass, the Bible said, and he would slay the Philistines. Amen. They would come with swords and with spears and with arrows. Amen. And try to overtake him. Honey, and he would take that jawbone and he would slay. Amen. This mighty army. Amen. Because he was of the Lord. Amen. But you see what? He laid his head in sin one too many times. Friend, I'm telling you. Amen. We could go over here to this graveyard. Amen. And if the souls of those that laid their head in the lap of sin too many times. Amen. If you could hear them crying out they would be saying oh God have mercy on me oh Lord please forgive me but friend it's going to be too late amen here they have they got this man bound amen they're making great sport of him amen even upon the rooftop the coliseum's full and on the rooftop amen they're looking down and amen here the old Samson is his eyes gouged out of his head but the Bible said Samson's hair amen begin to grow again amen I don't know about you friend amen but thanks be to God. Amen. We can call on the name of the Lord and He'll renew our strength. Amen. We cannot. Amen. Walk this road by ourselves. Amen. We must put our trust and our confidence in the Lord. I want to tell you something, friend. Our hope, amen, is not in a different president. Friend, I'm telling you what, you can put a Democrat, you can put a Republican, you can put an Independent in the White House. That ain't where our hope's going to come. It's going to come through Jesus Christ. Yes. You want to see America prosper again? Amen. You start praying for the leaders if you ain't already. Amen. To repent of the whoredoms. Amen. I believe it was the church of Thyatira there in the, amen, in the book of, of Revelation. Amen. They, listen, they, they begin to, um, uh, the children's back there. Can I just speak plain? They begin to whore around. With the things of this world. Amen. And Jesus told him, He said, Repent, or else I come quickly and I'll remove the candlestick out of thy place. Amen. Friend, you can't whore out here with the world and then come in here and think you're going to hold hands with Jesus. It don't work that way. Huh? It don't work that way. 99 and a half won't do it. Amen. The Bible, uh, the song says you got to live right to make a hundred because a 99 and a half won't do. Jesus said in the word, he said, I'd rather that you be hot or that you be cold. He said, because thou art lukewarm, he said, I'll spew you thee out of my mouth. Amen. He said, spew, that word spew there literally means to vomit. Amen. To, res- amen, to regurgitate. He said, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Amen. He said, I'll either want you all or I don't want you nothing at all. I don't want you 
in here one day and out the next. I don't want you in here just on Sunday and out all rest of the week. Hey Amen. I want your whole life. Hey Amen. I want everything that there is about you. Friend, I'm telling you, it's all I can do to make it with Jesus. I don't see how the worlds are making it without Jesus. It's all I can do. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. Make myself. Hey Amen. Do the things that it don't want to do. Hey Amen. Because I know. Hey Amen. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. I don't want to be Judas. I don't want to kiss the door to heaven and die and go to a devil's hell. Thank God for the plan of salvation. I don't know what time it is and I ain't even going to look. I don't care. We can't lay our head in the lap of sin. Oh, Samson's hair began to grow again. Hey man, it began to grow again. And he told that little lad, he said, put my hands upon the pillars of this great temple. Hey man, oh, Samson realized that he had messed up. Hey man, his hair was growing again. And he cried out to the Father, Lord, please forgive me. Lord, I've messed up. Lord, I followed after. Hey man, old Delilah. Hey man, I followed after that harlot. Hey man, I followed after her. Friend, I want to tell you something. The devil will paint you a pretty picture. Yeah, I'm on here to tell you the grass is greener on the other side. You better know why the grass is greener. Hey man, you'll step across a fence right into the cesspool of sin if you ain't very careful. I've said this time and time again. This is, this is a true account. It happened right out here in Woodway. When we lived out here in Woodway, the neighbors, Lord, they used to have, they called them acid parties. Hey Amen. This was back in the day. Hey Amen. There wasn't no methamphetamines and stuff like that. Hey Amen. They was doing, hey Amen. They was hitting heads of acid. Hey Amen. They'd play rock and roll. They'd blare music all hours of the night. Now, I don't know how many times the police was there. Hey Amen. They come in one night, honey, hear the, hear the blue lights coming. People took off running. Hey Amen. The next day, Dad heard somebody hollering, Help! Help! Dad began to look around to see where that cry was coming from. Hey man, that old house. Hey man, you know what their septic tank was made out of? Hey man, they took old hey man, metal storm doors and made them a box and that was their septic tank. Hey man, and they just put some stuff over the top of it, nothing solid. And that old boy, when the law come in that night, he took off running and he fell right into that cesspool. Hey man, and it was so sticky and it was so slick. He couldn't get up, get up out of that mess. Friend, I want to tell you something. Sin, hey man, it's so slick and it's a sticky amen you can't get up out of that mess amen that old boy had to have some help amen that's it I'll call and I'll get you some help amen he was covered in niceness from head to toe friend I want to tell you something amen a little bit of leaven leaveneth the whole lump it ain't a great big sin it's those little sins huh come on fire department came they said we're going to throw you a rope they threw him a rope. They put it around him. They pulled him out. Hey, man. He said, I need help. They said, you stand still. And they got him a fire hose out, buddy. And they went to washing that mess off of him. Hey, man, I thank God for the blood. Hey, man. Hey, man of Jesus Christ. That will wash that mess of sin off of you. Hey, man, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That old crimson red blood that's, hey man, that'll stain. Hey man, but it'll, hey man, it'll wash you white as snow. Hey man, and I, I thank God that I've been to, hey man, the Calvary's fountain. I thank God that I've been under the glory spout and the blood has washed away all the sin and all the niceness, all the stench. Oh, that old boy, honey, he stunk. Hey man, he, he was in the hospital for days. Hey man, he had, he had ingested, hey man, that stuff. He set up sepsis and Lord, he, he was very sick. Hey man, but the, it was the mercies of God that he made it through. Friend, I want to tell you something. Hey man, if you make it to, hey man, to heaven, it'll be by the blood of Jesus Christ. You won't get there no other way. Hey man, all roads don't lead to heaven. There's just one way. And Jesus said, I am the way, Amen. the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Friend, I want you to know today. Hey man. You can turn a deaf ear all that you want to. But there'll come a day that you wish that you had listened. There'll come a day that you wish that you'd have gave heed to the call. Are you ready? Are you ready? If the Lord should call you, are you ready? Amen. Has the blood been applied? Amen. Are you living a life pleasing unto God? 
Amen. Letting go of the things of this world. Amen. Letting, amen. But the Bible told us. Paul wrote, I believe it's 2 Corinthians there, chapter 5. Can't remember the verse right off. Amen. But he said, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Preacher, you don't understand. You don't know what I've done. Amen, friend. I want to tell you something. I don't care what you've done. Amen. The Lord loves you, and He wants to forgive you. Amen. He wants to be, amen, your advocate. Amen. He wants to be your propitiation for sin. Amen. He wants to be your way of escape. He wants to be your I am. He wants to be the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. I want to tell you something. He wants to be your Alpha and your Omega. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready if the Lord should call? Are you, are you ready? That old song says there's just one way to the pearly gates. Amen. To the crown of life and the friends who wait. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Amen. Have you, have you grown cold on the Lord? Maybe, maybe this morning you've got out of fellowship with God. You've drifted back out into the world. Friend, you can backslide. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care, amen, what religion, whatever it is. You can backslide. You can. You can get out of fellowship with God. If you, if you couldn't backslide, why would he say in the scripture, I'm married to the backslider? Huh? You can get out of fellowship with God. You can grow cold on the Lord. Don't be a Judas. Be a Peter. Huh? Don't be a Judas. Be a Peter. Don't come to the place in life, hey man, where you realize you've done wrong and you don't ask the Lord to forgive you. Because I'm telling you, you'll look across that great gulf, huh? Weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, screams, torments. Hey man, hey man, I don't know if you've ever looked it up or not, but you can go on YouTube. Hey man, you can look up screams from hell. Hey man, they've drilled ho holes in the earth, bored holes into the earth, and they've sent microphones down deep into the, the core of the earth, down into the heart of the earth. Hey man, and you can hear people screaming. Hey man, you can hear people screaming. Well, now, preacher, everything on the internet ain't true. But I want to tell you this he hell's real. Amen. Hell's real. It is real. And the Bible said there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hey man, can you imagine? Been in, been, hell's not going to be a place to party. And you know what? That's what the devil's telling people. Ah, oh, just come on. It'll be a party place. No. No. Hell ain't going to be a place, amen, to party. There ain't going to be no drugs. There ain't going to be no alcohol. There won't be none of these earthen things, amen, in hell to try to bring you temporal satisfaction. But there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. The Bible said, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Amen. Anybody in here likes to, amen, stick their hand in the fire and get burnt? If so, I'm going to pray for you because you ain't in your right mind. Amen. I don't like to get burned, do you? Huh? Don't feel good. Amen. It don't feel good. But you think about this. That fire's going to burn you, but it ain't going to consume you. You know, fire that we know has to have a fuel. Has to have something. Has to have oxygen, and it has to have a fuel source. Amen. For that fire to burn, it's got to have oxygen and a fuel source. Do you know that gasoline will ignite, hey man, at uh, like negative 80 degrees? But, hey man, it don't take very much for that little spark to blow up. And the liquid part of gasoline is not flammable. It's the vapor. It's the vapor. Friend, all these old wildfires. There's one right now in the middle of Virginia. Hey man, I think they said it was 3,600 acres. Structures and homes being destroyed. Fire just wreaking havoc. The wind not being favorable. Not very much rain. Amen. That fire, as devastating as it is. I was reading something the other day. I didn't know it. One of the islands down there in Hawaii. Lord, they, about the whole island got burnt up. Amen. With a wildfire. Amen. And as devastating as those fires are, it can't compare to what hell is. It can't compare to what hell is. Friend, what have you sold out, amen, to and turned you back on the Lord? Huh? Be a Peter. Don't be a Judas. Be a Peter. I've tried my best this morning. I honestly, I honestly, I'm not looking for pity. I'm not looking for no sympathy or empathy or nothing like that. I didn't think, 
I'd be able to get this out this morning, but thanks be to God for the help that he has sent by. Don't be a Judas. Be a Peter. Don't be a Judas. Be a Peter. Don't you lay your head in the lap of sin. Amen. Don't you let the devil see where your weakness is. As friend, I'm telling you, he'll come in, amen, and he'll tear you up. He'll chew you up, and then he'll spit you out. Amen. When he's got what he wants from you, he's done with you. He's done with you. The devil ain't after those out here in the world, honey. He's done got them. He's after us. He's after us. God bless you as our prayer. We love you in the Lord. We'll say this. Amen. We do appreciate your prayers this morning and over the past couple of weeks. Amen. I thank God that uh, Jim stepped in and helped us out. And uh, I just I love you in the Lord, church. There's too much to gain to lose now. There's too, too many miles behind us. Let's just keep pressing on. Amen. Let's keep pressing on. Amen. You take one step forward, and I don't care if you take two backwards, you keep taking that one step forward. Eventually, by the help of God, you'll get there. Because there'll come a time when you can take two steps forward and it'll just be one step backwards. Amen. But you see what? You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. The Bible said he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Be a Peter. Don't be a Judas. Don't be a Judas. Be a Peter. God bless you. Come on, Jim. God, a day for sound doctrine. And there's one thing, when the world's on fire, that cannot be consumed, and that's the Word of God. Amen. The elements are going to melt with a fervent heat, and this earth is going to be burned up, destroyed. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. The Bible says, wherein dwelleth righteousness. righteousness. Amen. Praise God. Praise God today. Thank God for the sanctification of the washing of the water of the yeah. Word, helped by the power of God and the salvation. Amen. To everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Thank yes. God that we were included in the plan of salvation. Amen. No Made may possible that you and I could have a relationship with our Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. Our faith and trust and belief in Him. Wonderful, wonderful teaching this morning. Take it to heart. Apply it to your life daily and you'll benefit greatly. Amen. From the Word of God, if you'll be a doer of it. The hearer is not justified, it's the doer, the one that acts upon the instructions given through the scripture. Thank God yes. today. He speaks to us and oftentimes very plainly. Yeah. And it comes very near to where we live to show us that God cares for us. He wants to bring us out of those uh, horrible pits, amen. amen, that Satan lays before us to try to entangle us and yeah. trap us. Amen. Praise God. All right. Someone with a word this morning for the Lord.